INFPs are a unique, creative, very sensitive, awesome people, but man, are we hard to get close to. So in this video, I'm going to give 10 pieces of advice from me, an INFP, to help you get closer to your INFP friend. And actually, most of the advice that you've probably heard is missing one crucial piece that I will tell you at the end. Have you ever met an INFP and been so intrigued by them and really wanted to help them? Maybe they were struggling with uh, depression or they had some creative pursuits that they wanted to do, but they just couldn't figure out how to do it. And you're like, I just I want to help you. I want to help you so much. I've heard that so many times from my other friends, too, um, where they're just like trying to understand me and they're trying to like support me on my journey and help me do the things that I want to do. And yet, uh, maybe I don't take their advice. Maybe I it doesn't line up for some reason. Or maybe I'm stubborn and just want to do it myself my own way. Um, or maybe it was from somebody else before they became a friend and they didn't know how to support me. So I want to tell you how to support your INFP friend here. First, share personal stories. And I know as an INFP, like we tend to, and Fs might understand this, we tend to like absorb people's stories. Like people just want to tell us what happened to them and like give them, like help me process this emotional stuff. And they, they pour a lot of emotional baggage on us. Um, but it's important that you open up and share your experiences though, because this helps you create this reciprocal relationship too. And it's not just about sharing your stories, but getting them to share their stories, getting us INFPs to feel comfortable enough to open up. And that can be quite difficult because if you think of the metaphor of opening up, that is really what it feels like. It feels like I'm just like cutting right here and opening up part of my chest, exposing my heart, being extremely vulnerable. Um, and that is a scary position to be in. But it is important that you do share your experiences and encourage them to share theirs too. Um, you might think that you already do this, but maybe give it a little bit more um, effort in terms of thinking about how do you do this and when did you ask for their advice <laughs> or how did their day go? Like this is something I always think about. Like no offense to my wife. I love my wife. She's an ENFJ. She always tells me about her day. But sometimes I don't really get the chance to talk about my day unless I assert myself in that conversation. And as an INFP, I'm likely not going to do that. So creating that time, that little bit of opening opportunity to ask them can be really helpful. Maybe we'll share, maybe we won't, but we like that the consideration. Next, it's really important to recognize and appreciate the individual nature of the INFPs and celebrate their uniqueness. Not every INFP is the same as every other INFP or any other person or any other personality type. We all have our unique differences. Introverted feeling carries a really nuanced gradient and just it's so granularly different than other functions. It attaches to this internal value, what we think is important or what we feel is important, um, and our assessment of that. So if, if um, creativity is important or grit or family or growth or sharing, whatever their value is, that's not going to have the same um, weight for other INFPs. And this is, again, true for every personality type, but we live by that the fuel for our existence is aligning to our value or values. So make sure that that is recognized and appreciated and honored to the best of your ability. And by understanding what is truly important to them, like what is your values? What are your values? What is like so important to you in life that you would do it no matter what? And what does that give you? What does that give you? Like really digging down deep is something that most people don't do for INFPs and even most INFPs don't get clarity on that. So you can help them discover more of their identity, which is an amazing feeling for INFPs. Point three is that part of our personality type is extroverted intuiting. This is this idea battery explore, explosion, exploration type 
function where all we want to do is connect more and more dots and see what happens and it's this burst of excited creative energy if you get your IFP friend or partner comfortable enough that they get into that zone they will be very happy especially if it's encouraged in a way that allows for self-expression so engage with them in art in music in writing in story in play um, some of the most uh, memorable moments in my life are times where i was allowed to be creative or encouraged to be creative in the outer world with the support of my friends whether it was uh, encouraging me to break dance on stage or uh, getting into acting and modeling a little bit or uh, encouraging me to be more outgoing and talking to people and and kind of being a, a guide or a support along the way those have been amazing experiences that taught me a lot about who i am and who i want to be in the world and infps want that and if you can help them with that then uh more power to you and the INFP will love you forever maybe number four something important again within our structure of our psyche is introverted sensing this is uh, collecting capturing experiences and reflecting and reviewing over them to understand things better uh, and it also creates familiarity and stability and it's a tertiary function and the tertiary function one of the roles of that within the psyche is to bond with other people if you create this safe space where the INFP knows what to expect they know you well enough you know what they like you've shared interests then they are going to feel happy and comfortable and so if you can dive more into their interests what games do they like what movies what topics they will be more comfortable in opening up and sharing that space with you and then within that space you two can explore together and create this more passionate exploration of ideas and interests and that might get the INFP more fired up and and spark them to do something very uh fun or different um and likely get outside of their comfort zone and produce something or you know share their artwork or something like that because again they've had that support with them of somebody who's sharing that same space in a comfortable way next number 5 is to offer genuine support and i'm sure that you do that but sometimes we don't know that and it's really important that like sometimes this is this is a hard one sometimes we need a little bit more pushing um in a positive way to open up and i know that like i have many memories of my enfp friend um saying like you sure you're okay you sure cuz you know and just kind of just that little bit of egging me on uh sometimes i didn't take the bait but other times like yeah actually you know this is this is bugging me and it's something that you know i was going to process on my own but since you're asking okay i'll open up about it even with like best friends that is still a difficulty because we naturally want to process our emotions internally to understand ourselves internally um part of that is because at least for me i feel it's my responsibility to understand myself and my emotions and to process them not not to have other people understand them or anything like that it's me they're my emotions they're it's it's my state right so it's up to me to do that but it is really helpful to have somebody there that can support us and if you do that enough then you show that you're consistently reliable in that space it helps us also if we can get into extroverted intuiting and we can brainstorm and share ideas back and forth with you um that helps create more space for more ideas and a deeper understanding as well number 6 is to engage in meaningful conversations INFPs run from just talking about the weather or like what other people are doing uh those kind of things are just really really unappealing and boring and we want to talk more about like ideas and dreams values aspirations uh how we can like build a better world stories like not not daily life stories but stories of fantastical events or 
um, I remember I was on a date with uh, another INFP and we were talking about um, just the possibility of life in space. And that was for some reason, I guess it was maybe it was because we were like sitting outside on a uh, we jumped a fence behind a police station, maybe a bad idea. And we're looking out over um, the Japan horizon at night and we were talking about that. Like that was such a cool experience. And if you can create many of those, they will like build this stronger connection with you as well and allow you to um, get into the INFP psyche. As a side tangent, I suppose, on that last point, point number seven, uh, explore nature together. Like go outside, go to the woods, go to the park, go for a walk in nature. Uh, we're not necessarily physically connected to the world. We're not in extroverted sensing, like seeing the dew drops on the leaves and, and feeling the slight different of difference of temperature in the wind. Like, but being in nature creates this amazing feeling of like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. It. Maybe another INFP who's watching this can explain. But it's like a joy of being alive and the possibilities within that, I suppose, um, and kind of distracting ourselves too, but also connecting with, um, maybe it's like an over stimulation of extroverted sensing that lets us go into introverted intuiting and lets us, you know, connect with the unconscious, but it feels more like explosive and fantastical than that. I don't know, but do it, go to the beach or something like that. Just walk around outside with them. Um, no plan necessarily. It's good fun. This next one is really important, although all of them are very helpful, but this one comes up a lot and it's respecting their need for space. I know you've probably been burnt by an INFP, maybe are currently being burned by one, where they just, they stop. They stop talking to you. We stop talking for no apparent reason, although there is an internal reason, there's something going on, there always is. Um, but we do need space. So please allow us time for solitude. Even, even my wife, even my best friends, even myself, I need space away. And like, oddly enough, I could probably do it for a very, very long time. Like I could be by myself for a month, and start to feel rejuvenized, rejuvenated after that. But we do need space. So if we do start to separate or something like that, I don't know, like it's not a good thing. It's not nice for the INFP to have done. I think that is something that we do need to work on. But it's like, just, you know, apply the other steps, I suppose, and say like, I'm here. I, I want to know more. When you're ready to do that, I would love to listen. I would love to understand more about what you're thinking and why you're thinking of it. And that hopefully will create that space for them. But if you start like pushing more, unfortunately, we're likely going to move farther away. So I know it's a difficult balance and it's something that like I can't give a clear formula for how to deal with but it could have started because we felt like we needed more space and so we kind of distance ourselves from it but just in general too we need alone time because that's how we process our feelings our identity our values who we are what who we want to be is through that self-reflection time and if we don't get that we need it will find a way to be gotten <laughs> it will find a way to come out and likely that is through creating more space um, because extroverted intuiting as well our auxiliary function again that explorer like character wants freedom wants to explore new things wants new options and opportunities and introverted feeling if it if it feels that it's not getting something that is aligned with its identity with the INFP's identity, then it is going to find a way to like sabotage that or get away from it. So if it's gone too far, and that's why the INFP has, or and the INFP has left, that could be why. 
Again, I can't give you a clear formula. This is step one, step two, step three, because life is not like that. But hopefully having a different or deeper understanding of it can help you out. And also making sure that they know like how they're affecting you with that. Not accusing them, but saying like, you know, it, it really hurts me when you do, or when this happens. Not when you do this, but when this happens. And I would like some closure on it, or if we could talk about it, that would really help. Because um, sometimes as introverted feeling is not selfish, but it is self-focused. And if we spend so much time trying to understand ourselves, we might miss that we are impacting another person in a way that is not what we want to do. And like we don't want to hurt another person. If you know an INFP, that's, you likely know that. But sometimes we might not even see that. We might not see our impact in the outer world because we're so focused on trying to understand what is going on for ourselves. And so that little bit of knowledge might give the, the tweak in thinking for the INFP to reflect on your position and then take it in and say, oh, yeah, this is not a good thing and maybe I should do something about it. Next, number nine is to surprise us with a thoughtful gift. Give something that is like aligned with our identity, something small, something meaningful, um, whether it's a, I can't show you because it's on my my leg, but like a an anklet or something ma that you made maybe. Uh, those are really nice and they're signs that Yes, that you care, but also that like we are special in that relationship. Like there is there is some meaning for us being there, some reason, not just because we exist, but like because we are said person. And that is a very important feeling for INFPs too. And the last one, point 10, which is also part of that crucial mistake that so many people make is ask for our perspectives like ask us about how we think and how we feel and what it means to us don't um just don't share all of your stuff all the time like really try to get to understand us too and you know maybe you've done that and i really appreciate that for all of us infps but it's something that as an infp as an introvert as well we often struggle with of everybody else talking, everybody else doing stuff, and we don't or feel like we can't assert ourselves and our opinions and our values and what's important to us and what we think. And then when we do, it's often kind of like, oh, yeah, and this is what I was thinking or this is what I was feeling. <laughs> it's like completely brushed off. But it, it feels like it takes a lot of energy and effort to get that stuff out to share our opinions, to share what is important to us, to say, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to eat tonight. And if we do say that, please do your best to appreciate it, to honor it, to accept it. Can't do it all the time, I know, but it's likely not something that we just kind of like, well, this is what I want to do, and there was no thought or feeling or um, intensity behind it. Share your stories down below.